It's a six thirty-eight. Alright. Let's go ahead and formally call this meeting to order. It's at six thirty-eight on Monday, August twenty-fifth. Uh, we have a roll call. Lisa Jim Major. Ted Bowman. Here. Susan Dolan. Here. Janet Everson. Here. Lisa Everson here. Jason Green. Here. Steve Bender. Here. Sam Darwell. Here. Michael McDonough. Here. Charlotte Nelson. Martin Warren. Are you here? I'm here. Martin here. Mary Jane Pembuster. Here. Green Walters. Here. <laughs> All right, uh, now to the uh, portion of the meeting where we're going to open up for public comment. Uh, as we can see, we have one person <laughs> and uh, three minutes. And if there's anybody else, a total of 21 minutes all total for this portion. Brenda. I just wanted to address it. A few weeks ago, the YouTube was brought up, and I explained to a couple of people that it was not uh, on camera and so I wanted to explain the YouTube account is youtube.com backslash city of Raytown. Uh, it does not have my name on it, although I subscribe to that channel, so you'll, you can see them on my channel and that's just a check and balance for the city. Um, and they are uh, later on our account because we have we get a tape from michael we have to convert the tape for instance the last two we've not gotten tapes from michael but i have i've talked with michael and um, he's going to check on that for us so we have to wait till we get that tape to convert to put it up on youtube but also there was a question about it being under my name. It's not, it's under PIO City of Raytown. So whoever comes in after me, it's, it'd be very fluid. So I just wanted to address those. And it had nothing to do with us trying to not put it up. It's just once we get the tape, we get it converted by our IT and then I put it up. And it doesn't take long once I get the conversion. All right, just for your information, uh, the minutes as of uh, July 28th uh, was not recorded, or that session wasn't recorded by Michael. Correct. And so you wouldn't be missing that one, it would be just this last one. July 28th? Right, August 11th. Which There's, the last one we had had two parts that we've gotten taken from. Okay. But I talked to Michael about getting those. All right, great. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for Brendan and regarding it? Thanks. Any other public comment? Seeing none, we will move on with uh, officer's report. Uh, and as chair, uh, I told everybody last uh, session that I would be working on the uh, uh, request for proposals for uh, attorneys. I have got that about 75% written. Uh, I like you all are a very busy person, so I was not able to finish it like I told before this meeting. Uh, but I will finish it uh, with, by this weekend, uh, get it, a copy out to everybody and for review, and then hopefully we can get it approved at the next meeting. Um, and other than that, um, I don't have anything else to report at this time. Uh, Secretary? In the last minutes, I noticed at the very end I did not put Mr. Asian's last name, so I would like to have that uh, in there as, I suppose, an amendment or friendly amendment or what have you uh, before we approve them. And uh, otherwise, um, the last couple of meetings, as I reported last time, I have been adding in the sections that we approve underneath where it's, it shows who, uh, that the voting, you know, yays and nays, and what we approved. I've been doing that the last couple of meetings, but I did not do it on the initial sections that we approved, so I'd like um, approval or maybe a motion now or a motion in a future meeting to go back and amend our old minutes to insert the sections as they were worried when we approved them so we can have everything square. 
So are you making a motion then? I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, all right. Do we have a second? Is that? All right. Thank you. This is a motion to add in the Mo motion to um, edit the previous minutes to include the uh, uh, approved as you report, right? And the approved, approved sections and articles, correct? Right? Is that right? Okay. And you're going to second that. Your, your intent is to your intent is yes. to bring them back for approval, correct? Yes. Any discussions about that? Then we'll take a vote on that one. And then I'd like to keep the minutes for this meeting separate from that. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Lisa Anderson, yes. Jason Green? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Steve Janet Anderson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Ted Bowen? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Okay. And now, I, I'm, I'm going to check with everybody else on this. I, I talked with Lisa a little bit. Uh, on the minutes under Section 310 legis Legislative Procedures, the only thing that I might have possibly found, and I just want to concur with anybody else on the commission, is at the last sentence where it says, uh, inspected by the people in the office of city clerk, I had the word the for a city clerk. Does anybody else have that? If not, we can just leave the minutes as they are. It's 310E in the very last sentence, or second to last sentence, I'm sorry. For some reason, I put the word the uh, for city clerk. I don't know if anybody else had it. If nobody else has, then we can leave it as it is. Does anybody else have the word though? No, and, and anything that they might have taken notes of that might have said that that word was missed. It says the you talking about section G. What's that? 310G. No, no, no. This is 10 E. The second to last sentence. I'm just trying to confirm that. Yeah, office of city clerk, or is it office of the city clerk? What was actually said? And I guess Lisa can look at the uh, recording and, and verify it. So okay, okay. we'll let her we'll let her review that one and then just update it. But then I, what I'm trying to do is still be able to prove the minutes as they are with that one minor correction if it is in the in, in the recording. If that's okay. Is she gonna look at it right now? Or no, no, she can look at it. Now we can. Yeah. Okay. 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 We're open for a motion or something. A motion that I look and make sure what word was there and what not, and either way, um, otherwise, I motion we approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I second. All right, thank you, Jan. Was the motion to approve? Yes. With? Encourage it. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing. It is or isn't there. All right, any other further discussion of the minutes? Lisa, can you call the vote? Michael McDonough? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Jan Anderson? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Lisa Anderson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Ted Bell? Yes. yes. All right, Mark, have we spent any more money? I don't think we have. <laughs> and you have but we're going to. Okay, there you go. Do you want to at least state the balance in the account? Balance in the account uh, is still $9,900. Um, 
sorry, just the last few just be. I'll catch up with you guys. Right. It worked out. Does everybody approve of that since it's such a continuation of the same number? So, so, okay, all right. Uh, old business, I kind of talked about the documents uh, uh, for the attorney. The only other thing I had uh, as miscellaneous was the fact that we passed on section 310G. Uh, we have a suggested wording in the packet that we got uh, today. And I didn't know, Jason, if you had had an opportunity to relook at this. I know that this one session might have to be tied to a referendum if that gets put into uh, the charter because it might keep something from being uh, approved immediately. And whereas, uh, Janet, is this your suggestion as far as the writing of Section 10 G? Okay, I mean, uh, you want to go ahead and read it, and then we can at least make have a small discussion on it before we go forward. Every anomaly ordinance or resolution shall take effect and be enforced at the expiration of 30 days after adoption, or at any later date specified therein. Emergency ordinances shall take effect and be enforced upon adoption, or at a later date specified therein. Did you have anything in there with the uh, authentication and reporting? Well, th that also should be re uh, recorded uh, by the clerk. That's like a discard. It should have that other in there also. So after the date specified therein, you're saying we should add, shall be authenticated by the mayor and city clerk in the file? Yes. Has everybody followed that? Okay. All right. Yeah. But the uh, 
Article 3, Section G here. 310G? Yeah, rather, yeah, 310G. Um, on the effective date, I'm trying to pull up here what these papers here and get this, my question straight. So bear with me. Um, pretty much the only difference between the original version that I submitted and this is that there's a 30 day. This is every adopted ordinance, or there's a 30 day uh, ex extenuation, if you will, like it doesn't become official until after 30 days. Correct. That's what you suggest. Okay. May I ask why that was added? I think that the people should have a chance to look it over and make sure that that's what they want before it goes into effect. And I, I agree with you. Can I give you an example of how that has an unintended consequence? Um, this last board of Walmart meeting, we had a gentleman who uh, was applying for a, uh, a conditional use permit for the old uh, Adams Toad. Uh, and uh, because planning and zoning uh, had a situation where they couldn't be corn, uh, this process, the process was delayed an additional two weeks. So what happened was we went ahead and tried to suspend the rules to do the first and the second reading at the same meeting because this gentleman would have had to pay $400,000 of capital gains taxes if this resolution wasn't passed uh, within that week, this week, period, this last week period. And the reason we were kind of hamstringed was because at no fault of this gentleman's own that there wasn't a quorum at the planning and zoning. And he pretty much practically flatly said this, if I can't get this approved this week, I'm not going to pay $400,000 in capital gains tax because it had to do with his business. I'm not getting too much in depth with it. It's cash transactions. So he said he was if he couldn't get this approved and run through, he wasn't going to invest in in that, that old that, that plot, that old space. And so pretty much if I see this going in as the way it is, that would pretty much hamstring the board of Walderman in terms of making those decisions and, and possibly, you know, maybe hurt a, a business opportunity. So um, and I see why you you wrote that in I really do. I just see there could be some unintended consequences to that, and that's that's the concern that I have about the uh, extinguishing the 30 days. Okay, Jeff, before you respond, Sandy. Uh, Jason, just <coughs> I just want to say that clarify something. At the last planning and zoning meeting, we did have it work. The problem was the man did not get his paperwork in on time. Okay. Was it wasn't. It wasn't because of. Of uh, they're not being informed. He just didn't get it in on Friday. Well, I was, I'm just repeating what I was told. I know. And so, but I appreciate letting you know because I was told last meeting that that was the case. And no, so, we had it for him. That's one of the issues. Oh, well, okay. Well, I, I do go to, yeah, obviously. But, um, because I got to read that in the morning. Um, but again, I, excuse me. Yeah, sure. The month before was when he, he wanted it in then so he could get it on last week's. Or just week, last week, yeah. council meeting, and he, but he didn't get his paperwork in in time, so they were trying to speed that up. I see. Okay, well, and I, I appreciate the clarification on that. Now, I was just pointing to that, though, as an example of a possible opportunity that, you know, if there's something in the ordinance or something that needs to be pushed through for, you know, potential business at some point, if you put the 30 day time limit on there, um, I, I think that could possibly create unintentional consequences. I guess that's what I'm getting at. And I guess I gave that example that I thought was going to work that maybe is not. So anyway, but still, I think my, my, my uh, the principle of the argument, uh, I think, remains the same. So anyway, I just wanted to express that. And if anyone has any, want to clarify anything on that, please, please do. All right, Janet, then Dick. Uh, well, I, on their, the emergency ordinances, that would have been an emergency ordinance because they would have and had the first and second reading at the same time. And that's in the They should take that. Can we double check? I guess I, might be, I think you may be right on the emergency ordinance and if we if we have, if we define that as an emergency ordinance. I mean if, if we have it written down yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that and I think you're right on that. And again though, yeah, I just I want to bring this up because that's a concern that I have on that. Ted, is, it, is this a correction of something we've already done? No, we didn't. Yeah. Something we didn't finish. We, we didn't finish. We passed on it last session. Okay. 310G, we passed. And that's bringing it up. 
my only other question or observation is if, if we design the process for creating the ordinances as, as we discussed to give people time before they're passed, if once they're passed there's another 30 days, what, what I mean, there is no recourse left after that. I, I don't understand the purpose of the 30 days, I guess. It's, because if, if we wait between meetings, as we discussed, for two readings, so that people have an opportunity to argue about it or, or to oppose it or whatever, once it passes, now they have 30 days to do what? Watch. Yeah, I, I just, but, yeah, that's all I'm looking for. Is there, is there a uh, Yeah. Well, the, uh, but I got Susan first, and then I'll go to Sandy. My point was the same as Janice, so next. Okay, and that point is that you want to give the people some time to respond to it, which would be. My point, my point, Steve, was that, Mr. Chairman, was that um, if indeed there were an emergency, it would be an emergency ordinance, and let's do it, you know. Um, I don't clearly understand the 30 days need for wait. If, and, and I was reviewing your old's work here because I've missed a couple of meetings, but uh, as I recall, the ordinance of ordinances are read in full two times before being passed or put up for a final vote, correct? Not in full. Not in full, but in uh, title and summary. Okay, and therein okay. lies possibly a reason for the 30 days. Well, because of a lack of clarification, or perhaps somebody came into the decision-making process late in the game and only had an opportunity to hear the ordinance read by title and in summary. So, with that in mind, I can see the, the need for the 30 days, and still the option remains for the passage of an emergency ordinance if one exists, if the need for one exists. That's my take on it. Thank you. There is always going to be somebody that doesn't like the ordinances that are passed. And if you read it twice, and it's available for people to come up to City Hall and look at it and read through, prior to the second meeting. I I don't see a problem with with not having that 30 days on there. They have two weeks to do that. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I might add to this is with the mayor having the power of veto, Rob Grant could give him, I believe, seven days uh, before final signage. Before so I mean if we say it takes effect immediately, then we're still giving the mayor a chance to, to veto it for seven days, then how does that fit in? And then if we end up going to a system of initiative, referendum, and recall, I believe in referendum, we have the citizens have an opportunity to oppose something that might have been passed by the board of aldermen. So in that case, we also have to look at time wise. So I, I'm almost in the opinion that. Uh, maybe we should pass on this until we decide on those uh, items like referendum and see how they might tie into this. It is, and I'll make a motion to that. Okay, I'll second. Is there one on the floor? No. Okay. Any other? Uh, so. After your vote, I have to remain an item. Yeah, and I'm going to motion to pass on it until we get through the article we're dealing with initiative referendum and recall. Okay. No, Susan. Sorry. Any other discussion on this before we take a vote? All right. Greg Walters. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Steve Gunther. Yes. Ted Norman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Lisa Anderson. Yes. All right. Let's get to new business. Sure. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Right. Uh, 
I was just thinking that the uh, problem of uh, a quorum not being there, whatever the reason was, and Sandy says there was a quorum, was one meeting. Um, there was a quorum for both meetings. For both meetings. So I really wonder, but I, I've heard, I know this has happened before, uh, where there were not quorums. And it's no reflection upon the current commission, but also the same situation with the board zoning adjustment. And I wonder if we should set up some rules in our charter that set the same guidelines or uh, <coughs> goals that we do for the board of aldermen. In other words, if you are going to be absent, you do so with permission of the rest of the member on the committee. If you miss so many in continuing flow, then you are replaced on the committee. You know, same. I think that when I, when I served on the board of zoning adjustments, I, don't think, I thought that was already in there, but maybe not. I don't know if that's the same. And it may be, but the problem that comes up is, how do I say this? There are a lot of people that like to not be in town on the weekends, or they are retired and they like to be at the lake. Um, but I, you know, I don't have a problem with people not being there unless we don't have a form, but I have a problem with people not letting someone know. If you're sitting there and just waiting and waiting and waiting and, you know, if they called City Hall and said, okay, I can't be there, then they let someone know. And she can, and she can let us know that you're not going to have a meeting if you don't have a form. And again, I would just caution everyone that uh, if we start to uh, so defining the exact roles of even the boards and commissions, this could be quite a lengthy document. And I, I, I would say that um, at least at this point in time, let's uh, possibly look at it, but let's get through the whole document and then if we have time to discuss it from there. I'm not saying that we okay. can put this in the document. I'm just saying that that's my opinion. If you're on a committee, even this one, they need to let somebody know if you're not going to be here. Okay, I, I agree. And I think we should honor uh, Greg's request that we at least look at it and as a commission address it at some point in time. Steve. Yes, Karen. Also, there's a problem, too, with a lot of committees well, I will just say residents. There's not a lot of people that will serve on committees. It's I mean, it's, it's really some of them are, are, you know, if they get a form, it's lucky. It's lucky. Okay. All right. I, I would disagree with that. I, I think it's a very debatable subject. I can bring people who have never been asked to offer to be on committees up here, and they never get a point. So it's. I, I don't think that we have only a limited number of interested citizens in Ray County who will not step forward. Well, this is, I think is a discussion for another time, but I agree, Greg. I mean, uh, I think we have a lot of individuals that would like to serve. Again, though, I would even caution, though, uh, when, you, when you're serving on a board, like the Board of Zoning Adjustments or the uh, Commission, uh, Planning Commission, I mean, there's a certain level of expertise that those people need to have in order to, to, to do that job. So let's, let's go on and move on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue back with Article 4 involving the mayor, and we're down to 4.4 prohibitions. And uh, what I did when I was setting this up, and I talked with both Jason and Lisa in the fact that I think that it should be set up the same way as what we approved for the Board of Aldermen, uh, the same prohibitions and the same vacancies, forfeitures of office. So I'm just going to read it as it is for the Board of Aldermen and replace it with the mayor. For, so 4.4 prohibitions, uh, I'm a holding other office, except we're authorized by law, the mayor shall not hold any other city office or city employment during the term for which they were elected. And I'll open it up for discussion. If no discussion, I'll take a motion to approve it as it is. I make a motion that we approve as it is. Second. Second. And I just want to comment, I believe you're consistent with what the current situation is. All right, the credits now. 
All right, so if there's no further discussion, we'll take a vote on that. Mary Jane Pembusker. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Jen Emerson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Michael McDonald. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Okay. Okay. Section 4.5 vacancies, forfeiture of office, filing uh, or filling of vacancy. Uh, vacancy. The office of the mayor shall become vacant upon their death, resignation. Removal, voter recall, forfeiture of office, or default to the city. And we'll again take these one at a time, A, B, and C. Any thoughts on that one? Again, that's worded exactly like the board wall. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Susan? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, we'll have to vote. Mark Moore? Yes. Lisa Emerson, yes. Ted Bowen? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Rommel? Yes. Jane Mary Jane Van Busker? No. Greg Walters? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Motion passes 10 to 1. Uh, section B, under forfeiture of office, the mayor shall forfeit office at any, at, if at any time during their term they, one, lack any qualification for the office prescribed by this charter or by law, two, violate any prohibition of this charter, three, are convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude, or four, fail to attend three consecutive regular board our regular meetings of the Board of Aldermen without being formally excused by the Board of Aldermen. Yes, Susan? I believe I read that Ted Bowman is going to find a uh, definition of moral turpitude. Yeah, and Ted did that when we, uh, and Ted, if you can kind of give it. But that's okay. <laughs> I mean, you have a very good, thorough definition of it, and again, it, it, this is the same word, word that we approved for the word all. And, and I, don't, I don't know that I kept it here with me, I, I, but I think when I, I wrote it, I believe. Um, yeah, and I, I kind of got it. Once I was satisfied, I wrote it. I think I sent the response to everybody, and I got. Well, it's like, like an erosion of. Um, it, it has problems, is it not? Well, yes, and community uh, standards, uh, things like that. Thank it, you. it was it was reasonably specific, and there was case law involved in how it was defined in the survey. Thank you. All right. Any discussion on this one? Anymore? We'll take a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I need a motion to approve. Thank you. Jane. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Any other discussion? Please take a vote, please. Yes. Senator Hartwell? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Reggie Van Busker? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Martin Moore? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Ted Dolan? Yes. All right. Crew 11 0. Uh, last section regarding there would be 4.4 C, uh, filling of vacancies. Uh, the mayor pro tem shall serve until the next. Yeah, until the next regular uh, municipal election established by the Missouri election calendar in accordance with the state law for which timely notice may be given for a qualified person to be elected by qualified voters to serve the remainder of the unexpired term. Any discussion? 
Any discussion? Thank you, Mark. Mark makes a motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Mary Jane. Lisa. Senator Harper? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Mary Jane Nambusker? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. All right. New article, Article 5, deals with the administration and personnel system. Uh, most of this language uh, is taken directly out of the MML. Uh, there is one sentence that I did add um, at the end of Section 5.1 that was in several other charters. Uh, and uh, I think Lisa put a note on there that we can review this and possibly uh, have a separate section that might address it for the entire uh, charter. So uh, when I get to that point, I'll go ahead and, and say that, that where that starts at. Anyway, Section 5.1, Administrative Organization. And the only thing that differs in this whole article is the months of adoption. And so, uh, the Board of Aldermen shall adopt by ordinance within 12 months, is what I put, of adoption of this charter and administrative code providing a complete plan of organization and structure of the city government. The administrative code may authorize the administrator to accumulate, uh, they said there, right, promulgate regulations dealing with questions of organization and structure. The administrative code and any promulgate pursuant thereto shall be consistent with this charter. Unless otherwise required by law, all boards and commissions provided for in the administrative code shall be appointed by the Board of Aldermen or by the Mayor with majority consent of the Board of Aldermen. Existing departments, agencies, authorities, and, uh, and this is where I'm just adding in what, what some other people, uh, other charters have added in, but existing departments, agencies, authorities, and other offices Committees, boards, and commissions shall be continued as constituted on the effective date of this charter until thereafter a change pursuant to this charter or by ordinance. And, um, like I said, that was almost word for word out of the MML. Uh, hopefully, everybody's gotten a copy of that and have had a chance to review it. So, we'll take discussion on it right now. Anybody want to address it? Seeing none, then I'll take a motion. So <laughs> moved. Yeah. I think Mr. Ray had a motion yet. I'll, I'll give him a second if, if necessary. All right. So, Jim, motion to approve. Is that correct? That's Jason right. Sackett. Okay. Any other further discussion? All right, Lisa, take a vote. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Mary Jane Dabuskirk? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Chimation? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Santa Harper? Yes. Okay, now, what's not normally in most of the MMLs, but uh, some people thought we probably should include it, I'll just read it, is um, under 5.1 item A, uh, the administrative code may provide for the following departments, boards, and our commissions, finance, or not, and commissions, finance department, public works department, fire department, police department, EMS department, board of zoning adjustments, planning commission, parks and Recreation Commission and Board of Trustees of the Police and Firemen's Retirement Fund. And I guess uh, we need to just address that. 
Yeah, one of the things is, is the city doesn't have any control on the fire department for its retirement funds. So that's it. They're on the board and they're on the board. So, both the fire department up above Mike and then the fire department retirement fund need to be straightened? That's correct. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, yes, Ed. Okay. If we've set out that the board has to create a plan consistent with the charter, why, why do we then need to go down and tell the board how to do that? I, I'm not sure I understand the purpose of A and B when we've given them instructions up here and then we're going to decide what they can and can't do with those instructions. Um, I, I understand Mike's concern about the fire department, but this does say that they may, and in fact they may, create a fire department of their own if they, if they wish. It wouldn't make sense under the current conditions. But you know, someday that may be necessary. But if, if we make these limitations, then why don't we just write it and say these are the only boards you can have? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the need for the subsections. And, and, and I'm in agreement with you, but it was asked to be put in, so we went ahead and put it in so that it at least can be discussed or whether or not. Um, I, did you learn the first? And then, I was going to say more or less the same thing Ted said. Of uh, I remember when you looked at this to begin with, Ted, you said it said shall, and so you changed it to may, so that they may provide for these departments if they want to, because who knows, we may need a fire department, like you said, in the future. But um, it uh, doesn't say that we, that maybe it would be easier to have a thing where they may not provide for other things, for instance, I don't know libraries or something. Um, I, should we have an inclusive list or an uninclusive list, I guess? That's what I've got. Well, my thought is an uninclusive list and let the Board of Alderman work on it. Or no list and let the Board of Alderman work on it. Because whether it's an inclusive list or an exclusive list, you're, you're adding instructions to it. Yeah, great. I was just, I agree with what you and Ted have said. <coughs> You're basically locking these commissions into place, and uh, there's been debate up here before, like as requiring as to the role of parks and recreation, and quite uh, recently, actually, with the current, well, not with this current one, but go back a couple of years where uh, a lot was changed and how it is governed and, and who holds the purse strings. So I think that what we're doing here, by putting in section A, we are hamstringing the local government being flexible in how they run their government. They may want to change the way they do that. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, Jim. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a mic here. Um, can you hear me okay? <laughs> um, so, for example, like, um, and I just, how does this fit into like, the downtown redevelopment uh, group that we have that oversees uh, the, uh, the downtown redevelopment. We have certain, I thought there were boards of commissions um, that said to lay down the, uh, the rules, for example, for the city, or that you went to if you wanted to uh, apply for a um, tip for downtown. Also, like, I think there's a Commission that oversees the place retirement. So, are those all nullified then? Are they legal or how do they fit into them? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's a number of these right. commissions and boards that we do have in place. I was thinking the same thing as Jim was because we have a council on aging that was on here. Right. In, in the past, they put together a uh, a property maintenance appeals board, which was in effect for quite a while, and then it was kind of disbanded, and then it came back again. So, you know, there are times when things have to change, and I don't know that this is something we want to do right now. Okay. I would suggest maybe that we get a list of 
those that are already or currently in place and review them at least to see what we're omitting or if indeed we do want to omit that. I don't know how much time that would take to, to get that with us, but uh, I don't mean tonight. I mean, I mean uh, for the next meeting. Yeah, Greg. I, I just think that you're covered in five point one. It I says. I agree. Yeah. 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 If you were to write out to read five point two, then yeah. those two things don't matter. Yeah. 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 All right. So I, I mean, again, can I make a motion to strike? Yes. Well, they're not in there. I don't know that oh. there's anything to strike. Just okay. Okay. So, and I'll we'll move on to five, uh, five point two. Anybody else want to read for a while? It throws on. Five point two personnel system. The Board of Aldermen shall adopt by ordinance within 12 months of adoption of this charter a personnel code providing a comprehensive personnel system for city officers and employees. The personnel code shall provide that all appointments and promotion of city officers and employees shall be made solely on the basis of merit and fitness demonstrated by examination or other evidence of competence without nepotism. The personnel code may authorize the administrator or personnel board, if one is established, to promote Promulgate. Thank you. Uh, regulations dealing with personnel matters. The personnel code and any regulations promulgated pursuant thereto shall be consistent with this charter. Existing personnel policies and procedures shall be continued as constituted on the effective date of this charter until thereafter changed pursuant to the charter or by ordinance. All right, we'll open up for comment. If there's no comment, then I would take a motion to uh, approve. Move for adoption. Second. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? We'll call for a vote. Um, I'm still reading this. Can I pass it and come back? Okay. Lisa Emerson, um, Cass, Steve Gunther. Yes. Ray Jane Nabusker. Cass. Susan Dolan. Cass. Janet Emerson? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Robert Moore? Yes. For those that are going to Again, uh, 
this was organized based on other uh, positions. We just tried to keep some consistency in here uh, regarding this. And so, if I want to take this one off. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. City clerk eligibility. The city clerk shall be appointed on the basis of their clerical qualification. And shall be appointed by a majority vote of the board after receiving recommendations from the city administrator. It's 5.3. Pretty straightforward. Any discussion on this? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I wonder if the city clerk is supposed to work at the. Is the board's. Secretary, technically. Um, also has roles that work with the city, too. I wonder, since the, they are supposed to work closely with the city and with the city board of aldermen, or uh, whatever, the city council, whatever you decide to call them in the end, um, should this be something that should be an appointment that is made at the beginning of each term of office? It's open for discussion. I mean, are you saying like every four years or something like that? Or every time the, office, the new board is sworn in, which would be every two years. Every two years. So we would be, what you're suggesting is we need to be reviewing or re, uh, appointing this person in every two years? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I have to disagree with her. I think that's, that's just asking too much. For one thing, you'll end up losing somebody who might be good if they think they're going to maybe lose their job. Okay, that's a few years I can see that. Mary Jane, did you I agree with what Sandy said. Anybody else on this side? I agree also. I think what we want is professionalism here at City Hall. And when you, if you have a constant turnover from clerks, um, I think it takes away the job. Anybody? I agree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, the only, the only thing I might add is, again, just trying to say consistent. Mike, would you have a problem with that same board of all members as just the board? Yeah. Oh, we need to make that up. It's just being consistent with what we're doing. Yeah, we'll reread we read the final time. Thanks. 5.3 City Clerk A, eligibility. The City Clerk should be appointed on the basis of their clerical qualification, shall be appointed by a majority vote of the Board of Aldermen after receiving recommendations from the City Administrator. Any further discussion? Well, thank you, Mark. Second. Thank you, Mr. Been moved and seconded. Any other discussion before we go? All right. This is the vote, please. Susan Dolan. Yes. Uh, Jen Person. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jim Bishop. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Mary Jane Dunbuskin. Yes. Steve Duncan. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Motion carries on zero. Mark, do you want to continue on with your feet, please? Thank you. 5.3 City Clerk B. Duties. The City Clerk shall be the custodian of and have on file in their office all public city documents. Shall ensure these documents are kept promptly updated and are easily available to the people for review at all times in print and electronic format. The city clerk shall keep the journal of board of aldermen proceedings, shall authenticate by their signature of all ordinances and resolutions, and record them in full, properly indexed in a book kept for that purpose. The city clerk shall keep an updated list on file in their office designating qualified individuals that could exercise the powers and perform the duties of the city clerk during a prolonged absence, disability, or vacancy of their position. The city clerk shall perform such other duties as may be required by law, by this order, charter, or by ordinance. Okay, 
Any discussion on this one? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Jim. Who seconded? Jim. Any other discussion? Take a vote, please. Martin Moore? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yes. Ted Bowen? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Jake Jamaisha? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Motion carries 12 to 0. Uh, I haven't seen compensation. Will I entertain you, Mike? City compensation. The board shall fix the city clerk's compensation by ordinance. Now, the only, the only thing I'm not going to add by this is uh, I had a decent check with uh, Teresa on that. Uh, it appears that her uh, annual compensation is fixed in the fiscal year budget as approved by the Board of Aldermen as a resolution. So, do we want to clarify this statement or how do we check it? Yeah, I just have to judge just said the way they do it. Okay. The way they do it does clarify it. So the board approves it, they do it through the budget process. Chair. Okay. Yes. Susan. I concur with Ray. I don't think we need to strike this down any time on this. Is that what you're saying, Greg? Yes. Okay, so leave it as the board shall fix the city clerk's compensation by what it is. Okay. Go ahead, Ted. It wasn't your question though whether or not doing it by resolution? Well, is that the is that the issue you're concerned about? Well, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's based on it's from what our understanding is that we found out it's part of the fiscal year budget, and that is approved by resolution, is it not? Not by ordinance. Should be by ordinance. It's by ordinance, and then as it goes through the year, they they resolve through resolution. If they're passing the budget by resolution, they have no interest. Well, all right. So I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to get some clarification out, out there for everybody. So I, I, I like Greg. I think that's fine. Okay. All right. And then we'll leave it just as it is. I'm just. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none. Thank you. 
school and a few other pieces. I'd like to rescind the motion based upon Chad's explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. All right, Lisa, you have a question? Um, should there be anything included with city clerk or city administrator for that um, matter about uh, moral turpitude? Mr. Yeah, you don't need to be If, well, for instance, if uh, the Board of Aldermen thought it was okay, like the city, whatever, was something, I don't know, some bad thing, and then the Board of Aldermen just didn't think it was a problem, but the rest of the population that was like they were stealing everything from the office, I don't know. Um, and what if the Board of Aldermen just doesn't care? I mean, should they still be held accountable to the same standards as the Board of Aldermen? I just don't know. <laughs> Um, the board should, but the board doesn't enforce the law. I mean, you know, the problem clearly. All right, Sandy. If uh, I don't know exactly what I'm remembering, but I'm remembering that I read something in, in some of this stuff, we have so much stuff, that the city administrator is over the employees and that's what she is. She is not a board member, she's not a department yet. She he, whatever it ends up being. So the city administrator would be the one who would bring forth any complaints to the board of aldermen. Am I not correct? She serves at the pleasure of the board of aldermen. I think anybody could bring a complaint to the board of aldermen. Yeah. So. Administration. Yes, I think it's hard to know if you put it that way. I read it, I just can't find it right now. All right, so um, Lisa brought up other issues. Um, how's everybody feel about that? I, I think it's written just as it needs to be written, quite honestly. I agree. I think, I think the answer to Lisa's question is the board is held responsible right. for that kind of irresponsibility. Exactly. Oh, it's already a motion and second. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Vote Janet motion to approve 5.3D and Ted seconded. So, would you like uh, to do the right again? Just, Please. Yes. Uh, 5.3D, removal. The city clerk shall hold office at the pleasure of the Board of Aldermen and may be removed by a two thirds vote of the Board of Aldermen. Is that correct? Jason Green? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Mary Jane Busker? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Harbaugh? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Jim Asia? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. All right, now we're up five points for acting city clerk. And I'll go ahead and read this. During the prolonged absence or disability of the city clerk, the Board of Aldermen shall, by majority vote, appoint an acting city clerk based when possible on the city clerk's file of recommendation letter. If a vacancy in the office of the city clerk occurs, the Board of Aldermen shall, by majority vote, appoint an acting city clerk until such time as the Board of Aldermen shall, by majority vote, appoint a new city clerk. Any discussion on it? Is that your hand up, Sandy? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I missed something sometimes. I apologize. Yeah, great. I was just going to make a motion to approve. All right. Second. Yeah. We need to read it. Yes, Sandy. It's so. If I'm reading this right, when is the city clerk supposed to file this recommendation letter? When they actually take office. You know, what happens if that person is not available? Well, I mean, it, it says only when possible. That's, yeah. Okay. We're saying that, you know, she should at least give us a list of names that she feels confident as a backup. Yeah. We need to reread it or just go to vote. Call the vote. Call the vote.
Ted Bowman? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Jim Asia? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Martha Moore? Yes. All right, seeing that, I think we'll take a five minute recess. We're getting into the city administrator.